We have with us now on the line from San Francisco, Attorney Melvin Belli. Good morning. Morning, how are you? Fine, this is Van Amberg on KNEW Radio. Tell you. I read your letter to the editor in Playboy magazine, and I wanted to get some comments from you if I could today, in as much as Jim Garrison is back in the news, um, and quite big with his uh, some of his statements about the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I haven't seen that, but uh -huh. I think I've said a few things about the Federal Bureau myself. Uh, th th this releasing of a medical re record or whatever it was on uh, Garrison is despicable. This is the, the, the modus operandi now, unfortunately, in our government. When someone comes up with something unpleasant against a government uh, officer, they leak, and there couldn't be anything else but this. They leak his medical reports, or they leak something, and they don't give the full story. They give something to make it uh, seem that the man is psychotic or a kook to the newspapers. I think this is worse than anything that was ever done in Hitler's Germany. I think the most despicable thing that I've ever heard of. And how the hell that could have gotten out of the Pentagon without a deliberate leak from someone in uh, one of the other government uh, authorities? You scratch my back and I'll do it for you the next time. I just don't know. It's a hell of a way to start a new year. Well, now, Mel, you said in this letter to the editor that you talked with Garrison privately in the Bay Area. I know that you were together quite a bit. He told you some things in private that, although they hadn't changed your mind uh, on the basis of the Warren report, you still thought that uh, the government should open up this case again. I think the government ought to open up, or we the people, wherein sovereignty resides in this country, ought to have the case reopened, not to prove or disprove the Warren report, but because there's so much ominous and sinister and uh, Black Dragon and James Bond uh, maneuvering going on, and we're in such disrepute abroad because of some of the commercial aspects of people writing books to try and show that the Warren report isn't good, that we ought to show to we the people just what happened, and I'm satisfied that when we do, that we're going to show the bona fides and the authenticity of uh, the Warren report. So I'd be scared to death if uh, we go out and get our best politicians in the good sense of the word, Warren and uh, the rest of them, the rest of them down the line, and something came out that they, they were either fooled or, or they just uh, weren't telling the truth. I think it'll be proved absolutely that they were telling the truth, but Jim certainly should have his say. Well, you said that he showed you things in private that made you think a little bit, although it didn't change your mind. Uh, do you still believe Oswald was the lone assassin? I certainly do. I haven't seen anything that would make me think otherwise. There are uh, not rumors. There are some isolated peripheral facts that uh, you wonder how they happen. I'll tell you one of the wildest ones that has happened to me so far. I was in here finishing, so I'd get it done last year, my new book, The Law Revolt, and I was working late on Christmas Eve. A man comes in who, to me, is an unimpe unimpeachable cab driver, and he tells me, and he was pretty scared when he came in here, he told me that he had Jack Ruby in his cab two days before the assassination of the president. And he told me that Ruby had told him in a very uh, excited manner, you don't know who I am, but you'll read about me. I've got to go back to Dallas and kill a man. Now, this is the wildest thing that ever happened. This fellow was not a nut. He's been to the FBI. I don't want to give you his name because uh, everybody would probably be chasing out there. I did give his name to UPI, and they're checking him out. As I, I certainly don't want to get into more of the, the Ruby thing or the assassination. But when these things popped in like this, then I think that uh, we, we just got to have another investigation, another report on the thing. This was Christmas Eve, and you were working in your office, and a cab driver you know to be unimpeachable said this. That's that, right. But, uh, well, do you still believe Jack Ruby was not involved? Jack Ruby told me that he was in Dallas all of that time, and I just can't, uh, I just can't account for this. Uh, the cab driver could have been mistaken, like we can all be mistaken on alibi testimony. Lee Bailey did a uh, talk for me not re uh, recently on uh, one of my ballet seminars, in which uh, he showed in some of these cases how these eyeball uh, uh, witnesses can be absolutely and completely wrong. Now, maybe this uh, cab driver, who was a bona fide cab driver, uh, made a bad identification, but he recalls the fellow showing him identification and him saying to himself, Boy, I got a kook in the cab this time. And why, why was all of this uh, 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 going on to, to build up a record uh, to show that he was here or wasn't here? I don't know. These are the things that uh, disturb me. 
But the, the things that disturb uh, the people in America are, are some of the reports given by some of the writers who uh, aren't so very honest uh, as to the facts that they're purveying. Well, Mel, uh, here are some of the statements made by Garrison that uh, have concerned a number of people that we've talked about. One, President Johnson, quote, knows very well that Lee Oswald did not pull the trigger, unquote. There is a danger that secret files about the assassination may be changed before they're released to the public. Well, that I could believe. I, uh -huh. I've seen enough uh, government changing of records and FBI changing of records, and this is on the record, to know that that could be done. But on the first uh, point about... Uh, LBJ knowing about this, uh, I just don't think so. But who am I to say? Uh, well, you're a very successful barrister, sir. Who am I to say that uh, the, the that uh, the Constitution has been changed so that uh, the President and Congress doesn't declare war anymore? You know, and I know that that Bay of Pigs thing when it came out, that uh, here the CIA, a secret branch uh, of our government, is training our troops down in Central America to invade another country. Well, that completely changes our form of government. Absolutely. I also know that the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution does the same thing. Huh? The Gulf of Tonkin Resolution does the same thing. Just about. Some of these things are real wild. So with, with, with uh, so many people flying around on broomsticks, uh, who am I to say that it isn't Halloween every day in the government? One final question, Mel. I know that you have an appointment right away. A little queer, too, you know. What's that? Some of those Texans are a little queer. I was down there. Well, how about that then? Let me ask you about the city of Dallas, because you made some remarks about the city of Dallas. Yeah. Uh, are you still of a mind that there was no conspiracy in that city? There are more nuts in Dallas than there are in a fruitcake, and I don't mean the type of nuts that uh, you, you put in a bug house. These are the type of nuts that will take their money and uh, send it out to right-wing organizations and, and really send substantial uh, sums of money to, uh, indirectly to change the form of government. I know that money is pouring into Sacramento at the present time to, uh, uh, well, the man up there. Well, I want to ask you one final question. Garrison said the Kennedy family is not aware of the real conspiracy to kill the president and because they had to depend on Johnson and Hoover for the facts. Now, uh, I'm wondering, since the Attorney General of the United States at that time was Bobby Kennedy, the brother of the president, could something like this in the wildest uh, form of imagination, have been concealed from him. Pretty hard to believe, and pretty hard to believe if that Dan dynasty, and, and uh, uh, so fond of everybody in the family and having so much money that if they thought uh, someone had assassinated uh, the brother, the head of the family, and if uh, the, the, they uh, uh, needed uh, any help, money, or otherwise, uh, it would be inconceivable to me that uh, they wouldn't have had it, wouldn't have gone out and made their own investigation. Now, that's the thing that I just can't understand. Well, Mel, I want to thank you very much. You're always a great interview, and you... Much to it. Uh, other than uh, uh, my own doubts uh, expressed now, and at least uh, consolidated in, that there should be another report, but not for the purpose of disputing the Warren report, for the purpose, I think, of, of proving it eventually, but we've got to do something if you're abroad. All you do is talk to a cab driver or an elevator boy or a waitress, and they'll tell you, look, 80% of them over there will tell you that the Warren report is inaccurate. Now, that, that's an awfully rough thing. It certainly is, and it certainly hurts our government in trying to do things in those areas. Yes, it does, more than uh, you can send all the material aid, but then uh, when they're taking that and they say, well, look, you talk about democracy, but when the chips are down and they execute uh, the, the president of the republic, then uh, you say you have sovereignty and we the people. Well, we the people don't find out the truth. And then they tell you about the Lane book and the rest of these books here. So we'll see what this year brings. But, you know, Jim says that Shaw will never come to trial if they'll assassinate him before he gets to trial. Boy, it makes you think. Mel, I want to thank you very much for being on with us. Now give us a call. I think Jim will be out here pretty soon, and he was going to talk to the press club, and I was going to uh, host the, the meeting, but he's coming out pretty soon, and we might get a chance to talk with him and see what he has to say. I would like that. Thank you so much, Melvin Belli. Bye-bye. My friend. Bye-bye. Mel Belli in San Francisco, and, um, well, you heard it. You draw your own conclusions.